Hi, welcome back to me and Mon Ami. And today we are headed into Nice. We are headed to the Cours Soleil, to the legendary weekly flea market. So today's journey is a massive 4.8 kilometers into Nice and um, where we're hopefully going to find some free electric charging and then we're going to take you to the Cours Soleil which is the old uh, very famous uh, sort of marketplace of Nice which the rest of the week is fruit and veg but on a Monday is this epic and legendary flea market. Now the reason we're going here is because well he was telling us the other day that um, well, things ain't what they used to be, that the, uh, the flea market is changing. So we're gonna go and see what's going on, see whether it's just a vicious rumor or whether it's true. And, but we're also gonna take you to one of our absolute favorite restaurants in Nice. Uh, again, somewhere we haven't been for a little while. Um, so we're hoping it's still as good, but not only is it good, it is also one of the cheapest and the most authentic restaurants, I think, in the whole of the old town. So, um, well, sit back and enjoy this brief ride as we go flea marketing in Nice. going to mention that today's episode is the last one of the month of March or it's our last Sunday adventure of March and as has now become traditional at the end of this video we will be uh, putting up a full list of uh, you lovely wonderful people who not only subscribe and watch the videos but actually send us a few bob buy us a coffee send us money via paypal um, can't say enough just how important this is there is absolutely no way we can make this channel viable based on youtube advertising as lucrative as it is uh, or not uh, so we really do thank you and uh, and we do love bumping into some some some, some subscribers subscribers uh, as we did uh, yesterday when we, we were buying i was buying some apples wasn't i wow. and we bumped into these lovely ladies in uh monoprix was in it monoprix in nice so we've just met two, two subscribers your names are Gigi, Gigi, betsy betsy houston. one from houston texas yeah. From DC. Washington, D.C. D.C. Wow. And you're on holiday, long stay? We're on holiday for two weeks here in Nice. A yeah. A week in Avignon and a week in Paris. Well, that's the life. Yeah. We want oh, to go to Avignon. <laughs> you're the ones with the life. Don't forget to stick around right to the end of the video and see if your name appears, uh, if, you've, uh, if you've sent us a few, Bob. And uh, if you have, thank you very much. You, uh, you are the stars of the channel. Um, and uh, if you can't afford to send us a few bob, well, please subscribe. That's free. It costs you nothing. We won't come round your house, but you'd be amazed. 50% of all our viewers every week are not subscribed, and many of them are returning viewers. It really helps us, and it won't cost you a penny. So, Mr. Boo, let's see if Liberace's piano deliverers are going to block our passage today. And well, that's not a sentence you say very often. Let's, oh, we're in, we're in, look at this. Free electric parking, yes, get in. Oh, who needs a flea market when you've got free parking? Look at this, straight in as well. Four spaces. This is, this is, this is living. This is, this is living. This, this is, is living. living. Let's get plugged in and get to the flea market before all the bargains go. <laughs> So we are headed to the Cours Soleil via what is the uh, antique district here. I think there's about 300 antique shops in Nice, aren't there? Wow, it's, 300. It's, I think it's something, it's something insane, but I mean, there are absolutely countless shops in this area. There's also a wonderful little secret arcade, isn't there? Do you remember? How do you get into it? Just, just off uh, route, this is Rue Segaran, isn't it? So this is the little uh, antique village and there are 36 shops alone in this area. 
um, and there really is all kinds of things. And there's even some artwork by our uh, favourite niece artist, Goya. Goya. I'm going to say Goya. <laughs> Moya. <laughs> Definitely not Goya. Uh, but yeah, we love a bit of Moya. Yeah, there's all kinds of wonderment in here. Well, well worth checking out if, you, uh, if you're coming to the antique village. Lots of little concessions and uh, something for everyone at all price points and a little cafe as well. It's, uh, it's a bit of Nice that's not really known about much this, isn't it? Very few people come here and I think it's, uh, it's a secret and it's a hidden gem. Let's not, let's not get into that cliche. Uh, but it is, it's a lovely place to be and it's a lovely garden. Oh yeah, what do you think to that, Twigs? Mm, a bit suspicious. Is it is it stuffed or is it uh, is it fake? I don't know. It's a bit worrying. <laughs> it's a bit worrying. I love these cow plates. They're so cute, aren't they? Dans la vitrine, sont trop trop mignons. Sont de sont de où? Sont de quand? Sont de. Alors c'est le sud. Je les ai achetés, là on, on revient de vacances, je les ai achetés juste avant de partir et j'ai oublié. Où sont ils, Mr. Boo? Ils sont 100 euros each. Each? Each. Oh, c'est un shame. Il y a 12 cows et un chicken. Oui. Elle a dit que si je veux tous les 12, elle va me donner un prix. Mais en tout cas, nous sommes allés à la plus grande des choses, à la flea market, et pour savoir si ce que les gens ont dit sur ça est vrai. What are you saying about this road, Mr. Boo? Well, there's been a big argument because they're wanting to make it two-way again. Because it, it's been one way since COVID, hasn't it? Yep, and uh, the, the mayor, Mr. Estrosi, says, over my dead body. And there's a battle, isn't there, between him and the regional government as to who's in charge, because I think further down the coast, there are people who want lorry drivers, etc., to be able to drive through Nice more quickly, don't they? Yes, but that's not what we want. <laughs> I don't think it is. I, I kind of prefer it one way uh, and a bit more pedestrian and cycle friendly. I said one day we will go out and catch these two. Hi. Two other Riviera vloggers. How lovely to meet you. Well, isn't it funny that we bumped into the, the Riviera Go ladies, Mr. Boo? Because I know. And if you're coming to the antique market, look, there's some uh, rather good electric parking here. That's auto partage, but there are four spaces for uh, for everyone. Right, we're here at the Costelaire, so let's find out whether what people are saying to us is true. Because what we've been hearing, isn't it, Mr. Boo, is that, well, the nature of the stuff they're selling on here is changing, and that quite a lot of the stalls are becoming what's well known as vintage looks, i.e. selling things like Gucci and uh, Armani and Navy and Hermes, um, you know, at really high prices, sort of second-hand handbags, etc. Um, now, they've always done an element of that in this market. It's not, it's, it's nothing that's totally new, but let's see whether, um, whether it's shifting, because I think the argument is that as more and more Far Eastern tourists come here, and young Instagram types, they aren't going to take furniture home but they might take a vintage handbag. Mm. Let's see. Well, so far, this looks very much like the antique market as normal. Uh, always this kind of stuff in this little alley here. Uh, but over here, these certainly aren't vintage looks, but we, are they vintage? We've got some uh, sunglasses. And again, very early on, you're seeing vintage looks. Vintage looks, Dolce & Gabbana, Gucci, Ralph Lauren, all of the stuff all going on. Some of these places don't actually like you filming, so what we may have to do is use our magical secret camera. So if the, if the image goes into sort of uh, portrait, you'll know why. See here, this is uh, sort of vintage Hermes scarves, Mont Blanc cufflinks. But already first two stalls and third stall here, more handbags and uh, vintage looks. So it does seem like things are shifting. 
here we go over here look vintage Louis Vuitton case over here again and look at the amount of people around it this is all vintage looks and um, you can see up here you've got Louis Vuitton and um, a lot of Chanel buttons a lot of Chanel buttons I didn't know there were so many Chanel buttons in the world do you know I knew someone at school who had a phobia about buttons Button phone. Yes, he was. He really couldn't. He'd, he'd like scream if he saw a button, and he eventually went into the priesthood. It's true. It's true. I like this Chanel one here. Yeah. And I like the tan tan tie. Tan tan tie. Tan tan tie. Sounds like a dish in Thailand. Tan tan tie. Now, are these genuine? These are the real deal. It's hard to know, isn't it? Well, they're not Chanel. No, these are just close, close relatives. Yes. Here's yet another vintage look stall. I've lost count now. How many do you think we've seen? Seven, eight? Seven. Something like that. Bags. Um, but the stuff that's, I think, declined a lot is furniture. You used to get a lot of great garden furniture here, kitchen furniture, big pieces, didn't you? Uh, but obviously they're difficult to bring to transport then they have to take them back home if they don't sell them um, they're clearly responding to market forces but it would be a shame if it all became vintage looks wouldn't it you know I still love these kind of stalls where you just got boxes of bits of rubbish and you just occasionally find a little gem for a couple of euros you know some lovely old plates or like the ducks that we've got on our wall at home that we adore, that we're, I think we paid 20 euros for, from Ilda Ogden. But it really is kind of amazing. I mean, I've been coming to this market, I think, for sort of 25 years, and for, I would say, 20 of it, it didn't really seem to change. It was, yeah, obviously, there was different bits of stuff, but you didn't suddenly see that there was a shift towards selling one kind of thing or another. But this vintage looks thing is clearly very big. Of course, what's interesting is if you if you sort of go in the rest of the world, or even if you go over the border into Italy a little bit, you can still find what I think are technically termed knockoffs, can't you? Knockoffs. Knockoffs of Gucci, knockoffs of Versace, etc. Now, of course, in in France, uh, you really, really, really can't sell those. It's very difficult to sell them. You might get away with it on eBay or something, might you? Um, Maybe. But I just wonder if that's what's leading to the the explosion of vintage looks down here is it's a way of selling um, you know those designer labels legally yes um, now I'm not insinuating anything I know nothing but I just wonder how you prove whether all of them are the real deal and over in this section it's a little bit more traditional uh, the vintage looks has disappeared and it's a bit more interesting to me what's that? Uh, for overpopulation, there's only one solution. What's that? Oh, that's... Do it there. I quite like the Grand Prix thing. It's a bit more tasteful. This looks a good album. Los Indios Tabajas. This is very famous. I remember this. Do you remember? Oh, I, they played it on holiday somewhere we were. I seem to remember. Is this Cliff Richard? Oh, no, it's Richard Clayderman. Do you remember Richard Clayderman? Just about. The magic of moonlight is not available in any shops, but ordering is easy. Please send a check or postal order for £4.99 to KTEL. I thought that was Dolly, but it's Dolly. Dolly. That well known and Pierre Boulez, I loved him. Look at Rick Hardman. I bet he could blow, don't you? George Brasson. He looks, he looks benign. Mm. Benign, George. Is there any, uh, my favourite? Johnny. Johnny Allardy. No, Beethoven. BZ. It's all a bit classical, Mr. Boots, very highbrow. Look at good old Elvis in his Hawaiian phase. Blue Hawaii. Do miss Elvis movies, don't you? Said no one ever. Oh yeah, Renault Alpine, they've re reintroduced this. You keep seeing the new version down here. I quite like them. Explicit, explicit cards. It's filthy, this stall. Look at this, somebody's been up all night doing this, Mr. Boo. 
Beautiful. It is. I'm, ask him how much. I like these Video 7 covers with guest stars Alan Parker and Sam Fox. Alan Parker? Oh, Sam Fox. And leotards and pornography. I like that. Next to Elvis. Homo, homos are making entries. Homos by the front door. Back door. What's that? Oh, that's cute. That's a cracking teapot. I'm a little teapot short and stout. Come on in and pour me out. And this extension sort of to the, the main market in front of the, uh, the Palais de Justice, the High Court. Uh, this is sort of now books, vintage clothes and uh, some nice vintage garden furniture. This is lovely, although it looks a bit more like a commode than a chair, doesn't it? But it, nice, nice wood. Um, yeah, quite, that's quite a nice set for 80. Chairs, Mr. Blue. I had one of these in Hull. I know that sounds unlikely, but when I was at university, there was a shop sold them near me and they were really cheap. Um, I think they're the sort of thing Tennessee Williams sat in on his uh, play cover, you know, play jackets, you know, jacket covers. Just before he went crazy. Ooh, there's a build your own baby in here, Mr. Boo. Look at this, it's a whole child if you if you're feeling like you're missing you're missing your children now they've grown up, you could come here. That's amazing. It's the premier manufacturer in the world for the fabrication of beautiful babies. Wow, that's a winner. And just a bit scary. What's this thing, Mr. Boo? I must admit, I'm a bit of a... If I had the space, I'd be a collector of sort of 60s, 70s kitchen items, wouldn't I? And that's like... It's like a mandolin. What do you do? Put your carrots in there? Well, you have, a very, have to have a very small carrot. Turn it round, show everyone. Look at that. Maybe you put your cigars in, or you don't put your finger in. It's for shaving something, isn't it? I wonder what. I like their clocks, though. They're lovely, lovely old alarm clocks. Do you remember alarm clocks like that, Mr. Bull? They used to tick so loudly that you never slept in the first place. I had one. You didn't need waking up. You didn't need waking up because you'd never been to sleep. There's always wonderful vintage posters on the Cross Slayer market, aren't there? Vintage Grand Prix posters, old tourist posters. Saint Jean Cap Ferrat, Cote d'Azur. These are faux vintage. Well, but do you think you think they're recreations? These are recreations, 2016. Oh, wow. Interesting. A lot of vintage model cars and cruise ships. Look at that. Peugeot 205 GTI. How to mend it, eh? Actually, a really nice time of year to come down here because summer it can get unbearably hot. And when I mean summer, I mean really any time from May onwards, can't it? The sun bounces off these uh, these flags, as they used to say. You could fry an egg on them, fry an egg on them, Mr. Boo. And it, you just start to feel a bit sick after the third stall, don't you? <laughs> Whereas today, in the March sunshine, it's a delight. If you come to the antique market, there are numerous restaurants around the edge where you can get some lunch. Now, um, it's tricky because some there are some good ones still. Some can be a little bit on the touristy side, and to be honest, uh, you know, I would head into the old town. The problem is that on a Monday, quite a lot of the restaurants in the old town don't open. However, the place we're going to take you does. Uh, oh, not on a Monday, but some of the better places like Comptoir, um, uh, Comptoir de Marche and places like that are not open. But there are good restaurants to go to there, but you sort of need a recommendation because there's quite a lot of sort of uh, uh, okay places, tourist places. But it is a fantastic place to sit. And if you want to come here and people watch, uh, you may decide it's worth worth taking the risk and having more free sat alongside and go for it. But uh, that's not what we are going to do. So we're headed towards our lunch destination, but we couldn't get a table until 1.30. Sort of second sitting, isn't it? Yeah. And we just want to show you up here another shop 
that we spotted because, um, well, it's vintage looks, but, well, <clears throat> I don't know. You decide whether it's real or fake. So we're just going to uh, switch to the uh, spy cam for this moment because I don't think they'll appreciate us filming and we might give ourselves away. They really have got everything in here. I have to say, this looks more like the real deal, don't you think? I think so. Yeah, I think so. It doesn't look like it's selling knockoffs, pretending they're vintage. But boy, has this market expanded exponentially. Vintage looks. Buy shares, Mr. Boo. Buy shares. Where are you taking me, Mr. Boo, up this dark alley? I'm taking you to see this door. Oh, look at this. What is it? This is a secret sign that tells you that this is where you could get a beer. So it was like a hole in the wall bar. And you could come and knock and, uh, and get a beer. See what's in there, is it open? No. Oh. It is, it's open. Oh, it's a... Oh, it's a, it's a gas omitter now. Oh, well. But, well, top but, tip, Mr. Boo. But looking for this secret sign when you can see a bevy, this is what you need to look out I for. I thought you were going to say this was the secret uh, uh, Jewish ghetto, you know, where they hid away in the war. But it's very near here. Near but, here. Uh, that's not that sign, is it? No. So just up here, there's some balconies, and there's no balconies like it anywhere else in the old town. Um, and it, they were put in because the people in the Palais Lascaris wanted something beautiful to look at when they looked out of their windows. Oh, and the Palais Lascaris is here, behind us. Oui. So, the restaurant we're taking you to, we first went to about 15 years ago, something like that. Yep. And in those days, it was run by a single old lady, wasn't it? And I think maybe her husband cooked in the kitchen. Uh, and there was sort of no menu, it was handwritten, uh, and, uh, and there was only one copy of it. <laughs> so, table one would see it, order, table two would see it, order, table three would see it, order, etc. And then when she'd gone right round, she'd start again taking the drinks orders, and then table one would get its drinks, and table two. Now, we once went, and we were, we were a bit um, hungry, weren't we? Hungry and hangry, and uh, <laughs> I nearly exploded. But then I got the food and it was absolutely delicious. Now, I think the lady has long since left. Um, but these guys took it on and we first came here about, what, six years ago? Yeah. And we, we used to come quite a lot, but then we just couldn't get in. You had to book weeks in advance and we never remembered to do it. Um, and then um, recently you went back, didn't you? Yes. Uh, and thought it was very good. So let's see, because um, it is so traditional and such incredible value that I don't think you quite believe it. Well, it's a very small restaurant, so we're going to just uh, secret film it rather than disturb everyone. Mm. Oh no, I might face this way, I think. Yeah. Oh, so how does a menu work here? Uh, they change it every two weeks. So it's a set menu, yeah. three courses, and you've got a choice of main course, choice of starting. I think three choices, three, four choices for each thing, and um, yeah, it's very local, very traditional. Mm. The price covered up to the end just to see if you can guess how much this three course lunch is. But there you go, the teleton out to artichoke, potato and herring, soup of the day, duck, salute, sausage, stewed soupions. Is that uh, octopus? Mini octopus. Mini octopus dough, and then our puddings. Let's see. Chin chin, Mr. Boo. Chin. To Palmier. To vintage looks. Vintage looks, why? Mm. 
So what have you got, Mr. Boo? I have got one of my favourites, Vitello Tonato. Show me it to the uh, secret specs. Let's have a look at that. That's amazing. So what's in there? It is uh, thinly sliced roasted veal with a tuna mayonnaise sauce. Delicious. And I have got pomme de terre potato with herrings, which I love normally. And it's, oh, it's the herrings are sort of in the potato cake, aren't they? Mmm. Oh, it's delicious. It's got that lovely, um, distinct herring flavour. Then there's a lot of chives. I think this might be a little bit of... I don't know what that is. I'm going to say basil, but I don't think it is. Oh, no, it's delicious with some crispy onions on the top. Yum, yum. Try that, Mr. Boo. Mmm. Yum, smoky. Mmm. Gorgeous. It is smoky, yeah. yeah smoked herring. And that's the lady up there who used to run it, isn't it, Mr. Boo? The old mama. So what have you got, Mr. Boo? I have got um, duck breast and some red wine salt. So I have to look what it was. Wow, with some nice little vegetables. Yeah. Show, show, the, show, the, show the, the camera. Closer. Oh yeah, lovely. Big piece of duck. It's a big breast. Considering the price we're going to reveal for this meal. But how does it taste? Perfectly look at that. pink. Perfectly pink. Smells of duck. Mm, taste of duck. Mm, Better than that tough duck I did the other night. Mine was tough the other night. No, this and I have got a baby octopus stew, haven't I? It's mini octopus. Mini octopus, not a baby. Not a baby. Oh, so we haven't slaughtered any babies. Our viewers don't like it when we eat babies, apparently. Yeah, apparently. <laughs> they got told off. So this is just a mini octopus. Mini octopus. It's like a mini Cooper. Like a mini Cooper. Let's see. Mm. Oh, that's delicious. It's like, um, mm, it's like a fish stock. Nice. Lovely. Messy. It's like um, a fish soup with octopus, potato, parsley. It's absolutely delicious. Is it whiny? Yeah. Mm, like a dough, but it's silky, slow -cooked silky, in red wine. silky, slow cooked red wine. Yeah, I'd say. Yeah, it's really nice. On oh, a bean, there's a bean, a has been. They've got quite a lot of retro ornaments. You'd think they'd have some old jokes in here, wouldn't you, Mr. Boo? For me. You know, like 70s comics that be on the wall. They have all kinds of wonderful devices, like this robot Marie. There you go, look at that. Early tech. So I'm going to have the cheese for dessert mm. because they marinate it themselves in olive oil. And on the way to the bathroom, you can check out a giant jar of What, they keep in the bog? No, it's a giant jar on the way of marinated to the uh, goat's cheese. I can see it over there. See? Gorgeous. Goat. The aforementioned goat's cheese. Goat's cheese, that looks delicious. Give it a try and nice olive oil. It's very beautiful and delicate. Straight out of that jar near the, on the way to the bathroom. Mr. Boo ought to write Michelin guides. That does look nice. Sexy. It used to be in, in the olden days when I was a lad. Delicious here. I'm going to grab a bit. Oh, sweetie. Oh, it's superb. Oh my god. Isn't it superb? Garlic feast. Mm. It really is. And that's, that's a piece of garlic. Mm -hmm. Amazing. And I've gone for something that I would never in a million years have normally. Uh, simply because I don't have pudding. <laughs> but, you know, it's three courses for our mystery price. Still haven't guessed how much, have you? Um, uh, so this is what pear and... Pear and chocolate upside down cake, essentially. Mm. It's delicious. 
very nice. I'm gonna say it's not my thing really, but it's very, very nice. And look, look over there, Mr. Boo. There's a poster for Noily Pra. That was a sort of posh like martini drink because I was brought up in a pub for the Queen's Silver Jubilee. We had a fancy dress competition and my mother dressed me as a bottle of Noily Pra and I was beaten by an Oxo cube. Well, Mr. Boo, what did you make of that? Oh, it was delicious. It was absolutely superb. I, I really, really, really can't fault that place. Um, now, <laughs> the price, and um, I think this is going to shock you, and I almost don't want to tell you because it is already very, very difficult to get in there. Uh, and I don't think um, uh, us telling you the price is going to make it any easier. But the three course lunch, and it's the same price at dinner because it's the same menu, it runs on a two week cycle. So three courses is a grand total of. 22 euros, which is about what, 19 pounds? Yeah. Uh, and uh, I'll try and put up the dollar price on the bottom of the screen so I can't quite calculate it. But it is absolutely phenomenal value. I mean, the octopus dobe, if I'd had a slightly bigger portion and I'd pay 22 euros as a main course, I would think it was. Um, fine i mean absolutely you know delicious and what you would expect to pay um it is such good value the wine uh, is really good value with two glasses of wine each and that still only pu pushed the total bill up to 56. and did you have a coffee no you didn't um so it's incredible value and it is a wonderful atmosphere but the cooking is absolutely superb Anyway, there you go, a vintage Lux restaurant to end this vlog. Hope you've enjoyed it. If you have, please give us a like, please give us a comment, please think about buying us a coffee. It really helps support these trips. But most of all, folks, remember, keep watching to see your name if you've contributed to the channel in the last month and stay charged. Bye. Bye.